So today I'm going to talk about threatening to sue people for defamation. This could be libel, it could be slander, it could be defamation of character, it could be copyright violation of using your somebody's image. Uh, there's a lot of confusion about this issue, and I'll speak of it as a lawyer from a legal perspective. Defamation cases against public figures are very difficult to win. There are two types of figures, private individuals and public figures. Private individuals, it is far easier to win a defamation lawsuit than it would be for a public figure because public figures are available for public discussion. And there you can have conversations about them. You could have different opinions, and some of these opinions can be quite critical. Now, one thing that you have to know about defamation is when you are a public figure, the standard that you have to prove because you are the plaintiff is so, number one, you are the plaintiff. You have the burden of proof, you have to prove that you were defamed. So to do so, you have to show four things, a false statement purporting to be fact, a publication or communication of that statement to a third party, fault amounting to at least negligence, and damages or some harm caused by, to the reputation of the person or entity who is the subject of the statement. Now there are different anti-defamation statutes that you have to be aware of, and they are state specific, right? So depending on which state you live in, you might have a different statute that you will look at. Most states assume that a speaker who defames another necessarily has the requisite guilty state of mind. Uh, for instance, in Maine, all defamation claims need showing a fault, which requires the plaintiff to prove that the defendant was at least negligent. So now we get to the actual malice standard, which is a case in 1964 called the New York Times Co. versus Sullivan case. This case has been cited in almost every defamation case. A chief, a police chief, bought a defamation claim regarding a newspaper. The Supreme Court held that for a public official to succeed on the defamation claim, the public official plaintiff must show the false defaming statements were said with actual malice. Now, this is very difficult. So there are two things that are incredibly difficult to prove if you're trying to sue someone for defamation. Number one, actual malice. Number two, damages. So we'll get to damages a little later. So I'll give you the definition of actual malice according to the, Silver, the Sullivan case. The Sullivan court noted the threat relaxed defamatory statements could pose to First Amendment freedom of speech and giving the special importance of being able to question government officials. The court found the state's libelous per se standard not satisfying the First Amendment protections as it relates to public officials. The Sullivan court stated that the actual malice means that the defendant said to said the defamatory statement with knowledge it was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. So there, that's the standard. You either had to know what you're saying is false or you have to have reckless disregard to if it was false or not, meaning that you didn't care. The Sullivan court also held that when the standard is actual malice, the plaintiff must prove actual malice by a clear and convincing evidence. So it's not like preponderance of the evidence. This is a very strong line. It's got to be clear and convincing rather than the usual burden of proof in a civil case, which is the preponderance of the evidence standard. So this, the level that you have to prove actual malice is a much higher level than the current, than the usual burden of proof, which is preponderance of the evidence. On this point, the precise language the Sullivan court used is that the plaintiff must show the convincing clarity which the constitutional standard demands. Boom. All right. So now let's get to the defenses. Now, the, even if they were able to prove all this stuff and whatever, right, your, your defense as the defendant 
is the truth. The truth is widely accepted as a complete defense on all defamation claims. An absolute privilege is also a complete defense to defamation claims. So the truth, you have to provide in discovery, the truth actually is that question. And when you're saying my character got defamed, then the answer is, oh, what is your character? So number one, the actual standard for a public figure like a Logan Paul, like a sports card investor is a malice with actual malice. That's exactly the words. And what does that mean? That means it, you knew it was false or you had a reckless disregard to whether it was false or not. The standard or proof of proving that actual malice by the plaintiff is very high clear and convincing evidence. This is much higher than the standard burden of proof for most civil cases, which means that you, you have to, to prove intent and, you know, reckless disregard. This is not, this is like very difficult to do. Then, okay, you won. Now the, the plaint, the defendant has able to assert a defense, which is truth. And to get to that defense, you need to go to discovery process, which means emails, it means text messages. It's very, very invasive. And it's not, it's not reciprocal. So if Logan Paul sues me or a sports card investor sues me, I get all their information. They don't get any of mine because I'm not suing them for defamation. My character is not at debate. Their character is. And so it's very one-sided. Discovery is incredibly one-sided, right? Because I get their private text messages. I get their emails. I get anything and everything I could possibly need to prove my defense of the truth. And that's why defamation cases typically don't go all the way. They are often settled or they don't even go to court many times because it's kind of a waste of time. Unless you want... You, the plaintiff, want all your dirty laundry aired out publicly for everyone to see, then it's not worth it, right? I mean, what are you hoping to gain? Some punitive damage, and, and then we'll get to damages. And damages, very difficult to prove what actual damages are. Maybe you get punitive damages, maybe you get lawyer fees, but at the end of the day, is it really worth it for you to air out all your dirty laundry? Because CoffeeZilla wouldn't have to air out anything. He's the defendant. He doesn't have to prove his character. His character is not at question here. It is your character, Logan Paul, at question. So that is the uh, burden of proof for defamation. Um, it is very interesting. Um, again, every state has slightly different regulations and laws about it. Uh, to give you an idea, libel is, uh, there is some confusion. Libel is when you write a statement uh, that is offensive or defamatory. Slander is when you speak it. So when people say defamation, defamation is slander and libel. Libel being what you wrote, slander being what you said. And, and it is considered a tort. So every 1L takes torts in law school their first year. And as a tort, um, it's a very interesting, uh, it's a tricky area because opinion versus fact versus the freedom of speech versus even the freedom of press and the case for CoffeeZilla might even apply. It's not easy to really win a case for defamation. And I don't know if Logan Paul can prove any of this stuff. Uh, and I do, I definitely do know that he's not going to want private texts, private messages between him and Jake. I mean, just remember who these people are. These people are Crypto King and Eddie Abanaz, a psychopathic liar, essentially. The guy who was already a criminal who was supposed to be head developer. These are not interactions that I would be like very, very confident of like what I, what did I text Eddie that one day? I do not want that to be public because I'd probably text them something that I, again, is not, does not paint me in a good light. 
So anyway, no one wants their private stuff made public. And I think Logan Paul, sports card investor, and the bunch, um, they, they, the truth, that will be revealed one way or another. And it really is not, you know, it's really one-sided in discovery. So that's what people are talking about in the comment section.